Okay, so we're gonna extend that until that bar length reaches the fifth med head. Okay. And then I could put my thumb on the fifth med head to stabilize the foot. So as I'm checking for subtalar neutral, I have a place to put my, my thumb. And so I'm gonna find subtalar neutral, which is here, and I'm gonna lock the forefoot onto uh, the midfoot. And then I'm gonna place my forefoot measuring device on there. You can see the platform is now underneath my left, left thumb. And then this upright portion, this vertical, is level, or rather in line with that of the Achilles. And so now I'm gonna look down and, and look at the measurement here, and you'll see that it's a zero. Now it's pretty uh, rare that we see um, a perfect zero. Normal range is zero to six, all right? Zero to four to six, in fact. But zero to six is the normal range. And that's perfect. And on this side, you can see there's a little bit more of a pitch angle. So if we bring this down, okay, and we're pretending that you know my finger is representative of that of that ground, you can see there's a little bit of a rear foot varus angulation, right? Slight. Let's see a little tubercle of that calcaneus. And we come down and we can see that the angle of the forefoot on the right. It's a little steeper than the angle of that forefoot on the left. So we're gonna measure this one. So same thing. Find the fifth, med head of the fifth. Find subtalar neutral. Lock the forefoot on the rear foot. And then we have the vertical upright lined up with the Achilles. And then we can take a measurement now. We can see that it's about a seven. So we're gonna go back. I like to do that two or three times and make sure my measurement is accurate and consistent. So once again, the vertical is upright and right in line with the Achilles. And my measurement's about a seven or an eight. Okay, so there's a little bit more of a four foot Varus angulation, so that means this foot's gonna travel and come down to the ground, those eight millimeters. So this is a hyperpronating foot. So we'd like to support this arch a little bit. Okay, all right, thank you, sir. If you would, come on up, and I'll try to explain to you what we just did. So, <laughs> so this is a perfect foot. This really doesn't need much support, okay? This one has eight degrees of pitch angle. And so that just means, again, you're traveling um, down those eight degrees. So again, this is a side of, of hyperpronation, aka arch collapse. Uh -oh. Okay. So usually what we have too with that is, is a dysfunction in, in the, the windlass mechanism. So when we extend that big toe back, it doesn't go back as far mm -hmm. versus this one. When we extend that back, it goes back just fine. Mm -hmm. So that's just because the arch is collapsed and the foot is elongated in that plantar fascia, that tissue underneath is maximally stretched. So it doesn't have any more give or slack in that tissue. So when we ask that to go ex back into extension, uh, it doesn't go anywhere. Okay. Okay. So what I would do is support uh, this foot, but we don't want to put one thing in this side and then nothing here. So there's something, it's just a blank. And then this one has a little bit of support with a little bit of uh, control on the bottom of it. And then we'll accommodate uh, this big toe uh, with, with a little device called a kinetic wedge. And then that'll allow that big toe to drop down. It'll shorten that tug on that tissue and you'll be able to regain that big toe extension. All right, okay. so that's, that's the goal of today. So we'll go ahead and grab a couple of products.